digital currency. It's an interesting topic, a little scary one. Merry Christmas, Canada. Digital currencies have been around for a while now, Bitcoin and all those altcoins and stuff, but the fact that the government is starting to think about this, they haven't just thought about this, they've registered the digital dollar. You were talking about Thank the you. CBDCs, the central bank digital currencies, and you mentioned in there that Canadians had really said privacy is a huge concern on that. Yep. Um, and as we saw a couple years ago, there was a big national protest, and a lot of those protesters were negatively affected through direct, through their mortgages and through their finances and trying to go after them financially. How can we ensure that the privacy and no political meddling happens in the programming of a CBDC which can be programmed? So how do you ensure that if I protest the wrong thing, somebody can't just push a button and erase me? Yeah. So, I mean, that's the design challenge that Canadians have put to us. So despite the Canadian government saying they have no interest, they're not going to get into digital, digital banking, they've gone ahead and uh, locked in the digital dollar. And it's like, this is something they've been working on in the background, it seems. This is a scary thing when you consider we had just a, a couple years ago, the trucker freedom rally, people had their bank accounts locked by Justin Trudeau. Is this really like... <laughs> The a kind of situation you want to have all your money digital where one megalomaniac ego narcissist can with a flick of a switch control your income and all your money? I don't think so. This doesn't seem like a very safe solution. Now if we had good protections in place, sure it'd be, it'd be better for society, it'd be better for everyone, it'd be easier. The problem is, is people are motivated by greed. You know, we, we as I said, we went and, and talked to Canadians about the concept of a digital dollar. And, and that was one of the concerns they said. I mean, they, you know, one of the reasons I use cash is that I can, I can maintain my privacy. There's no sort of record of, of, of me using the cash. So that, that's one thing Canadians have told us. So, you know, that's the challenge we have now. Can we design um, a, a digital version of cash that preserves the things that Canadians want about their cash? Well, currently there's still 11% of Canadians who resist doing online banking. <laughs> and the average Canadian carries $70 in cash. And then how strong is the firewall between the Bank of Canada and some up and coming politician who's got an idea of how they want it to be, which would come from some sort of like ideological reasoning of, you know, this person is bad or whatever they're buying is bad, so we're gonna shut them down, but this person is good and what they're buying is good, so, you know, maybe they get a higher interest rate programmed into their CBDC and then these guys, maybe theirs expire if they don't spend it in X amount of time or if they're you know, buying cigarettes versus buying lettuce. Like. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you're, you're asking me a question as though it's been built and, and we haven't built a digital dollar yet. Well, it's you know, been built in some countries. It has, it has not been built in Canada. So, so it's difficult for me to answer a question, but I mean, I think what we've heard loud and clear from Canadians is that the level of interest I'm going to have in using a digital dollar will depend on whether you can preserve the things that I like about cash. So, you know, that was, that was good feedback for us. We've, we've got a design challenge. Now, we think about cash for a second. If you had, say, 100 bucks, and you go and buy some bread and go to, the, go to a blacksmith, <laughs> pick a more recent example, you go to the mechanic, Etc. Say you buy some a bunch of bread or whatever, twenty bucks, and say you go to the mechanic and you spend eighty bucks. That's your hundred bucks. You think what those businesses do with that money? They go and spend money. But once you add in that whole digital layer, now the credit card companies are skimming a few percent off the top of all of that. So switching to digital is being convenient for us, but it's actually been bad for our money because a huge, well, it's a small amount of every transaction. A huge volume in general has been skimmed off by the credit card companies. Now, I recently heard Vivek Ramasamy, Ram, 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 the guy going for president in the States, he, he mentioned something which I thought was very interesting I never heard before. He gave all these examples of why climate change is a hoax. He said it's a tool used by politicians. It's kind of an every 15 year cycle, which you can look up. It does seem to be true to basically get votes. Climate change agenda is a hoax. And we have to declare independence for it. And the reality is, the anti-carbon agenda is the wet blanket on our economy. And so the reality is, more people are dying of bad climate change policies than they are of actual climate change. Governor. Something else, China is essentially 
infiltrating different democratic societies, gaining control, and then using their influence to try bringing our countries down so they can catch up. It has nothing to do with the climate and everything to do with global equity, specifically letting China catch up to the United States of America economically. And I have no problem with the existence and purchase of electric vehicles, but I do have a problem with a subsidized industry that falsely tilts the scales towards China. Those EVs, we depend on them. We depend on China for rare earth minerals and mineral refining capacity in order to provide those electric vehicles in the United States. So when U.S. taxpayers subsidize EVs, we are actually subsidizing the Chinese Communist Party on whom we rely for the production of those EVs. The same story for the solar panels in this country. We already know Justin Trudeau has taken money from the Chinese dictatorship. So there's no surprise there that there's that relationship there. But how deep does that really go? Uh, it, it gets got me thinking now, is there some sort of push to punish us with this carbon tax and canceling all the LNG projects and really hurting our economy so they can catch up? <laughs> it really does connect a lot of dots. I don't know if that's actually what's going on, but it's, it got me thinking. China emits more carbon, more greenhouse gas emissions than the United States and the rest of the developed world combined by claiming to be a developing nation under the Paris Climate Accords and other international standards. Yes, that is a farce. So you layer on a digital currency, and that's a lot of power over people and able to suppress an entire country, thus lifting another one up. I don't know, share your thoughts on that, but one thing that did come out of that is the uh, Maxine from the PPC, the Purple People Eater Party. Uh, he pushed back on the, this digital dollar that Canada's been doing behind the scenes here and said it's something that the citizens should decide. And it is, it should be something we decide. The, the thing is, is with Justin Trudeau at the helm of the ship, there's no way I want him controlling all of my money or all of our money. It's just, it's way too risky because he's already proven his track record for abusing his power. Now you think back to my other video there I made about saving a few bucks on your bank fees, which turns out to be like a hundred bucks a year, or if you have a business like me and a business account, then you'd be like, like 250 bucks a year. So they say we just go the hundred bucks. For 40 million Canadians, that's $400 million the banks are making. So if we stayed with a cash society, which isn't as convenient, they wouldn't be making all that money. So going completely cashless, they'd have us right by the, right by the nads to have full control. It's really quite aggravating when technology gets stunted by greed. Right, if you didn't watch that video, basically I just showed like EQ Bank and Tangerine. They're just much better banks. They don't charge you these horrible fees that RBC and Scotiabank does. And I actually found another one, Wealth Simple. Now I find Wealth Simple charges outrageous fees if you trade crypto. They do have a new account that's like 4% cash back on just money sitting in there which is a lot just for having it sit there. So if you guys are interested in those, I'll leave those links down below. I think they kick me back a nickel and dime if one of you guys signs up. I'm just being transparent, unlike the government. So I don't know what the solution is. Obviously we can't trust the government because they've proven they're not trustworthy. But I did just want to give you guys a quick heads up that the Bank of Canada is looking to do a digital dollar or something to watch out for. I'm not really uh, <laughs> excited about that. Either way, I'll keep you guys informed. Be sure to subscribe. If you guys want something to chill out a little bit, I've got a silent hiking channel, sounds of boot steps in the forest. Um, relaxing, peaceful, unlike anything going on in the Trudeau government. So I'll link that up right here and see you on the next one.